Thank you, Member. Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, they say that uh, repeating the same activity and, and expecting a different result the second time is the definition of stupidity. Well, I have little doubt that I'm repeating myself here today uh, in asking the government to put forward a plan for affordable housing, a plan that they're actually going to follow and with metrics that they're going to measure to see improvement in affordable housing. Uh, I'm hopeful that uh, rather than seeing the same result, we may actually see a response from the government, some words promising action this time. And the reason I say that is that the fi finance minister has been in the media. He's saying that he might shift the property transfer tax so that there's a higher tax on luxury homes and that he, above a certain value and that he might invest the proceeds of that tax shift into affordable housing. Well, Honourable Speaker, I'd like to use this uh, opportunity of the motion to raise to the government's attention that they've made this kind of promise before. Now, the last time that the government promised to use the proceeds from a new policy and invest that into affordable housing, it was when they decided to sell social housing units across the province. In fact, the entire portfolio of social housing held by the province sell that to nonprofit organizations. Now, they expect that the proceeds of that sale will bring in about half a billion dollars to the province. Now, this government promised repeatedly that they would use the proceeds from this sale, half a billion dollars, Honourable Speaker, to build new social and affordable housing across the province. Well, unfortunately, that hasn't happened. The proceeds from this sale went into general revenue and essentially displaced money that was already earmarked to be spent on maintaining affordable housing, existing affordable housing across the province. Now, the BC Nonprofit Housing Association came forward and they brought forward concerns about this flip flop on the promise to invest in affordable housing. They said, quote, We had understood that the funds generated through the Nonprofit Asset Transfer Program, it's a euphemism for selling social housing would be new funds to invest in provincial affordable housing initiatives, which would have been a much needed cash infusion during times of austerity. It was surprising to learn that so far, the income from the sales of Crown property is being used to fund previously announced commitments with no new money for housing, unquote. Honorable Speaker, that's half a billion dollars that was promised to go into new money for affordable housing during a crisis in this province that instead is going into general revenue. And what is the government doing with their general revenue, Honourable Speaker? Well, in part, they're funding a 2% tax cut for the richest people in this province. Imagine that. Breaking a promise to use money from selling social housing to put the money into general revenue and funding from general revenue a 2% tax cut for the richest people in the province. Doesn't that reflect the priorities of this government just perfectly? Honourable Speaker, it was several months ago now that I visited uh, Tent City in, in Maple Ridge, as well as residents who lived near that Tent City and a local business that was suffering significant losses as a result of the Tent City located out, outside their front door. Uh, at that time, the members for Maple Ridge were missing in action, and so was their government for the entire summer. They waited until the dying days of August to announce that they were going to fund a temporary shelter not a permanent housing solution, but a temporary shelter in a sleep country Canada store. Thank goodness that during the summer, the city took the initiative to hire outreach workers to house some of these people, that neighbours took the initiative to run garden hoses from their backyard to make sure people didn't suffer from heat stroke and end up in emergency rooms, and a government with half a billion dollars in proceeds from selling social housing took months to pony up half a million dollars for a temporary shelter. Up the road in Abbotsford, the city faces a tent city without end and terrace, a record number of homeless people counted by volunteers. It's no wonder, Honourable Speaker, that this province, despite repeated requests, refuses to count the number of street homeless people in the province. The results surely would not be flattering. We do have some metrics, so Honourable Speaker. The BC Nonprofit Housing Association says that in Kelowna, Penticton, Chilliwack, Whistler, Squamish, Nanaimo, and Victoria, one in four households pays more than half of their income for rent. Now, the rest of the province isn't much better, with one in five households paying more than half of their income for rent. 
If ever there was a time for the government to follow through with their promises on investing new money in affordable housing, now is the time. But instead of using the real money on hand from the sales of social housing to house people across the province, they're plugging it back into general revenue, and they have to be dragged to the table during a crisis for a temporary shelter, Maple Ridge. So, Honourable Speaker, today's motion, an opportunity to urge this government to step up and to keep their commitment if, in fact, they do plan on dealing with the property transfer tax in this way. Because the track record of this government in promising to invest the proceeds of these kinds of actions in affordable housing is not good. I worry about what we'll see in the finance minister's budget, the 2016 budget coming forward, with more proceeds from more sales of social housing, and potentially with proceeds from taxes on houses, what, above $3 million, above $2 million? Why do I have the feeling that we'll be, I'll be up here again saying the same thing? I hope that that's not the case, Honourable Speaker, and I thank you for this opportunity to raise this issue with the government today. Thank you, Member, member for Vancouver Falls Creek. I thank the member from, from Point Grey for his comments. Um, he started off by making a, 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 giving a quote from, I believe he was trying to quote Albert Einstein, which uh, I believe he misquoted him as well. Um, there was the issue of stupidity. I think Albert Einstein said the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again and expecting the same result. So if I might uh, helpfully correct the member. But I do also suggest that what he may be doing is, is very much what Albert Einstein uh, cautioned against. And he, I did detect in, in his statements at least two things he said. One was uh, taxing the rich, taxing those with high income is the way to solve our problems. And also, um, that foreigners, perhaps uh, foreign investment, people who are different from us, investing in housing might be the cause of, of, of inaffordable housing. So may I address those two points? Um, first of all, Vancouver in particular has seen uh, extreme difficulty in housing affordability. We have, uh, it's very corrosive, it, uh, it uh, harms investment harms the economy. Um, we have actually seen in Vancouver housing prices rising uh, dramatically since the 1970s. And any um, university student and now even high school students who are learning more about economics would tell you that the issue of price is a function of supply and demand. And what the city has done in the past is uh, certainly the city of Vancouver, when there was a lot of foreign investment looking for a place to land, the city supplied a lot of land, a lot of buildable property. Uh, we look at the Concord Pacific areas, we look at the, the uh, Marathon property now called Coal Harbor. And a lot of the foreign investment was able to be put into new housing that benefited um, the citizens of Vancouver and all the citizens of British Columbia. And the, this is the kind of investment that uh, economists love because when foreign uh, investors put money into new housing, they can't actually take the housing away. That, that housing there is long-term benefit for all of, all of the citizens. Uh, what we've seen since the 1970s is a, a supply problem. The cities have, have down-zoned a lot of the city. Uh, they've down-zoned. For instance, the West End was completely downzoned, uh, and that yet we saw in the 1960s, with the construction of West End towers, rents dropped dramatically. So we see that the laws of supply and demand do work, and that if you allow more supply, you will get lower prices. Unfortunately, the provincial government does not, not control supply. The supply is controlled by the cities. And the cities have to find a way to overcome local opposition and allow for more supply of housing. That was the best way 
to reduce the price of housing. And uh, we're going to have to somehow overcome the resistance that has been institutionalized in city government since the 1970s. Uh, we know that there are different ways to increase supply. There is sprawl. We could uh, continue to sprawl out into the furthest reach, reaches of the area. Um, for example, Metro Vancouver loses eight square feet per second in every working day to sprawl, new housing being built. Um, what this does is it causes problems for local environment and the global environment. Uh, there's a study recently done that shows that people that live in the downtown of Vancouver create one and a half tons of greenhouse gas per person. Uh, those in the inner suburbs create uh, three tons per person and those further out in Vancouver create six tons per person. So four times as much greenhouse gas created by, um, by sprawl. In Toronto, uh, they note that uh, someone who lives in Whitby in the farthest suburbs will create 10 times as much greenhouse gas as those who live in the downtown core. So we have to find a way to increase the supply of housing and uh, do that in an environmentally sustainable way. So um, we know that uh, when you build more single family homes, it takes 35 times as much land to do so as you, it member. would be in a higher density area. So I would offer those comments to the member. Thank you. Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Well, thank you, Honourable Speaker, and I thank the member for his correction on the definition of stupidity. I'm sure that uh, he knows more about this area than I do, and I thank him for that. Um, you know, I think one of the, uh, the core issues that this government has is in, in order to respond to a crisis of affordable housing, you have to understand that you have a problem. And you can hear in the member's response, first of all, that he doesn't respond to the issues that I raised. But secondly, he doesn't even recognize, and neither does this government, that there's an issue of affordable housing that they have a role to play in. He says it's the city's fault. The city would just step, he, he represents one of the densest neighborhoods in the world. Beside another neighborhood, the West End, incredible density. Vacancies of less than 1%, Honorable Speaker. What does our housing minister say? Don't worry about what the member says. What does his housing member, what does his housing minister say about the crisis of homelessness, about the crisis of rental affordability across the province? He says, quote, we live in the jurisdiction with the most successful housing strategy in North American history, Honourable Speaker. It, it would be funny, Honourable Speaker, if it wasn't so tragic for the families involved. Consider buying housing, Honourable Speaker. Get out of the rent race. Re rental less than 1%, why don't you just buy a condo? Greater Vancouver houses average over a million dollars a piece, up 173% since 2005. Well, a house, the entitled uh, millennials who want to live in houses, maybe they should try living in a condo. Well, sure, put your, uh, put your new family into a bachelor or one bedroom, because if you want two or three bedrooms, it starts $450,000, Honourable Speaker. Combine that with childcare costs, totally unrealistic for many, many people to live in Metro Vancouver. Here's what the minister said about the cost of housing in Vancouver, which was found by an international study by Demographia to be the most expensive city in the world when compared to incomes. He said it, Vancouver was, quote, actually pretty affordable, unquote. Here's the definition of out of touch, Honourable Speaker. What does the Premier tell people to do in Metro Vancouver? Move to Fort St. John, Honourable Speaker. Fort St. John, headline, Alaska Highway News, September 14th, just a couple weeks ago, quote, peace region among the worst in Canada when it comes to housing affordability. And the city of Fort St. John puts on their website that one of the reasons they can't recruit doctors to Fort St. John is housing affordability issues. Doctors can't afford to live in Fort St. John in the city the Premier is touting as the remedy to affordability. Now, Honourable Speaker, this government needs to wake up to the reality of the crisis. They have to acknowledge that there's an affordable housing crisis, first of all, and then they have to own that they have a role to play in ameliorating that. Because as Thank long you, as member. they have somebody else to blame, Honourable Speaker, Thank we're you. not going to see any progress on this issue. Thank, Thank you. you very much.